Now, if you enter this downturn on a wave of growing audiences, growing contributions, growing surpluses, and growing visibility, you might not recognize yourself in that description. And God love you, this time may be for you about hunkering down and staying close and just getting through. But if you heard in your past chronic undercapitalization, chronic undercompensation, and if you were engaged in the struggles I briefly survived, the road ahead both individually and collectively is different. And perhaps you too will heed the words of Abraham Lincoln just as Barack Obama did in his inaugural when he quoted Lincoln saying, the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. As our case is new, so must we think anew and act anew. And you might actually find hope in the words of eco-activist Van Jones when he said recently, sometimes it takes a breakdown to produce a breakthrough. The groups that are most likely, I think, to survive in the community are those committed to the breakthrough, to essentializing, to become rigorously clear about our values, questioning every organizational assumption that guides them, optimizing their assets based on success, whatever that means to you, not just financial, and making conscious choices about what they'll stop doing in order to free up the time, the resources, and the energy to experiment and search about solutions for the future. And to that end, I urge all of you to be prepared to answer four questions. What is the value of my theater for my community? Harder. What's the value my theater alone has or my theater has better than anyone else? Because in this economy, duplicated and second-rate value is unlikely to stand. Third, how would my community be damaged if I went away tomorrow? If we can't answer that, the only supporters we've got already sit in our seats. And fourth and finally, how can my organization and my community be optimally structured, managed, and behaved to be my community's best conduit to the theater? A question that invites us to question every assumption about how we behave, from rehearsals to tech rehearsals to pricing structure and more. And frankly, successful groups we see all over the country are asking those questions. They're moving beyond paradigms of assumption to paradigms of engagement seizing the true lessons of the internet, that it's not just broadcast, it's social networking and co-creation, and it's not audiences, it's partners in creativity, and our job is as much social interaction orchestration as it is to produce plays. Many are embracing the counterintuitive, as you know Michael Kaiser has encouraged you to do, who says in a downturn, increase the money you spend on artists and programming. That's why audiences love you, and increase the money in marketing, saying you can't save your way to help. Many are consciously becoming more risk positive, and by this I mean risk, not irresponsibility. Pushing past your comfort zone with your best knowledge, your best information, your best counsel, because we know a business that does not risk does not grow, a relationship with a husband, wife, or partner that does not risk does not grow, the performer who does not risk, however technically proficient, never achieves the true artistic moment for which we all live and work. Whatever the route you take, I urge you to seize it creatively, energetically, putting aside resources to tackle new initiatives that will stretch us in unforeseen ways. And if we do this collectively, I think we're not going to look back on this as an ordeal of survival. We'll look back on this as a true renaissance. And by that I mean what Doug Rushkoff meant, a collective renegotiation of old ideas to reach a new consensual reality. And let me close by saying, no one in the theater field is better positioned to lead us to this renaissance than you are. Unencumbered as many of you are unencumbered by permanent facilities, facilities that often entail debt, maintenance, and depreciation, many of you have the potential for nimbleness and fleetness and virtuality that your larger colleagues will envy. Working outside of prescriptive labor agreements that bar technological access to performers and performances Many of you can actively lead the way in new technologically mediated performance and connection with audiences. Working with young people, as many of you do, not through ancillary outreach, but through true collaboration, you are at the forefront of working with the future for the future, understanding its emergent dramaturgy and its way of connecting and convening. You are the first to see technology not as a threat, but as a liberator recognizing that we all now have the same tools as the Fortune 500 companies and the future is going to be less and less about who has the most money and more and more about who has the best idea. Yeah. And let's face it, for many of us in this room, the old systems didn't work 
And rather than standing in fear about what we're about to lose, we stand poised to reap the benefits of the change that's on us. Many of you are aligned with growing movements in social justice or education or in the environment or in innovation or in literacy and more. Paul Woodruff, in The Necessity of Theater, a book I'll always thank Ann Bogart for sending my way, said we need the theater because it's a double act. It's a double act of watching and being watched, a sort of contract of mutual responsibility, teaching us to pay attention so that we will know when to care. In an age when computer games outsell music and movie recordings combined, and the average young person before he graduates from college or she graduates from college has spent more than 10,000 hours playing video games, that's 417 days, 24 hours a day, games that too often teach us to be self-serving, violent, and impervious to suffering, theater teaches us compassion, empathy, and humanity. If we have ever been in a time when we have to confront the perils of a market mentality uninformed by social conscience and the emptiness of financial enrichment without spiritual fulfillment, that time is now. If we have ever had the opportunity as a society to redefine the bottom line from profit alone to a new triple bottom line, good for business, good for people, good for the planet, that time is now. If ever, as today in the face of that announcement, you probably heard it in the subway, please report any suspicious behavior or individuals to the authorities nearest you. An announcement that teaches us to look at our fellow human beings, especially if they don't look like us, with hostility and fear and suspicion. We need the theater. The theater that teaches us to come together to look at our fellow human being with generosity and curiosity. And we have never needed it more than we need it now. As we work together, let me urge you to make this the beginning of a longer journey, of a conspiracy, in the Latin sense of breathing together, in which you embrace and applaud not only each other, but the colleagues who by virtue of size or discipline sit outside this room tonight, remembering that wherever we work in the arts, we do it for one reason. We honor the past, we commemorate the present, we shape and we change the future in a way that does honor to all and violence to none. If we wish our nation to be a healed community, let's begin by manifesting the community we wish to see tonight.